Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. One of the most common questions we get asked at the battleship are, um, what is the difference between a battleship and other types of ships? And that's one of the cool things that you can get at a multi-ship museum, like here at the Buffalo Naval Park. They have a light cruiser, USS Little Rock. They have a submarine, USS Croker and a destroyer, USS The Sullivans. So it is really neat to see this collection of ships that are all very different from New Jersey, even though they're all World War II built ships. What is the difference? First of all, if you're watching this video, this probably is already something you know, uh, but first of all, all of these ships are not battleships. The number of times that I ask people, oh, have you been to any other museum ships? Or, or they come on, they're like, oh, this is my first time on this one. Like, oh, what other museum ships have you been on? I've been on the battleship up in New York. There is no battleship up in New York. They're talking about the aircraft carrier Intrepid. Do you know how you tell the difference between an aircraft carrier and any other warship? It's got a freaking flat deck on it, and it launches aircraft. I assume the word that they're looking for is warship. All of these various types of vessels collectively can be referred to as warships. Battleship is not a synonym of warship. Again, I'm sure you guys watching the channel already know that. It's John Q. Public uh, who this is news to. So, aircraft carriers, real easy. Flight deck with airplanes. Usually they are the size of a full-on capital ship, like a battleship. Although you do have light aircraft carriers that are more cruiser sized, and you've even got smaller aircraft carrying ships than that. In terms of other major warships, the next easiest one is the submarine. It's very important uh, that you don't define a submarine as a ship that can go underwater, because any ship can go underwater once. Submarines are able to go underwater and then come back up again. They are often smaller than any other type of major warship by displacement. However, that's not always true. For example, the Russian uh, Typhoon class submarines are the same weight as a dreadnought era battleship. So they can be uh, very large, although in general they, they tend to be smaller than other types of uh, surface warships. Next up in size is the destroyer. This is a much easier distinction in World War II. Destroyers uh, tend to be somewhere between 2,000 and 2,500 tons. You have some, say, French destroyers, for example, that get up to close to 3,000 tons. You have some older, like World War I era destroyers that are down in the 1,000 ton range. Uh, but in general, World War II built destroyers are all in that same range, and they typically have four or five inch guns, although some get up to six inch guns, which only confuses them with the next size up. Nowadays, the distinction between destroyers and cruisers is very difficult, and we'll come back to that in a second. First, let's look at cruisers. Little Rock is a light cruiser, uh, which means that she has guns typically four or five inches during World War II. Pre-World War II cruisers might even have guns as low as four inches. But by World War II, uh, light cruisers have five-inch guns on the real small end of the spectrum and six-inch guns on the higher end. They tend to be grouped right around 10,000 tons. Some are lighter in the six to 8,000 ton range, and some of them get heavier. Otherwise, they tend to be around the same size as heavy cruisers. And the big distinction is heavy cruisers almost always have 8-inch guns. Again, there are some distinctions. There, there are some that might have 7.5-inch guns or you know, other uh, smaller sizes. But typically, if it's got an 8-inch gun or thereabout, it is a heavy cruiser. If it has a 6-inch gun or thereabout, it is a light cruiser. Uh, again, they, say, they tend to be around the same displacement, about 10,000 tons, although some of the lightest heavy cruisers, like the British uh, Exeter and uh, York, are only 8,000 tons. Some of the heavier ones get up to 15,000 tons, and you even have them getting up to about 20,000 tons 
like in the case of Salem and Des Moines immediately post-war and Newport News. Uh, and then you've got other ships which are sort of in the middle, like the Alaska-class large cruisers that are just about 30,000 tons and are debated whether they are capital ship, battle cruiser type ships, or second run cruiser type ships. That's not something we're going to get into in today's video. Today's much more high level than, than getting down in the weeds like that. Then above cruisers, you have battleships. The oldest battleships are about 25,000 tons. The heaviest ones get up to about 70,000 tons. But during World War II, they tend to be 35,000 tons or larger. Uh, with the Iowa class firmly in the middle, designed at about 45,000 tons and maxing out about 57,000 tons. They tend to have 12-inch guns at the lowest scale, although there are some with 11-inch guns and some that might even go as low as 10-inch guns if you go real far back in time. Uh, but in general, they'll, they'll have 14, 15, 16-inch guns during World War II, with the largest maxing out at 18-inch guns. Again, those are aberrations at the upper end of the spectrum. So it's really difficult to define these ships by gun caliber or weight because when there is a standard, for example, the Washington Naval Treaty says heavy cruisers will be 10,000 tons and have 8-inch guns. When there is a standard like that that everybody has, well, as soon as those standards go away, you try to make something one size up from there to be able to destroy all of those other ships that are out there and render them all obsolete. And uh, largely... This is why cruisers go extinct during the Cold War. It's why battleships go extinct, too. They keep growing larger and larger and larger. Somebody keeps trying to build something that's bigger than what everybody else has, and they become too expensive to be usable. Having one super large ship is no good. Remember, in previous videos, I've talked about how ships can only deploy about one-third of the time. One-third of the time they're doing training, one-third of the time they're doing maintenance, and one-third of the time they can actually actively deploy. Your country probably has uh, priorities around the world in a number of different theaters. So you not only need multiple ships to be able to show the flag in all of these different theaters, you need three times that number of ships to be able to train and do maintenance and show the flag. So as your ships start to grow exorbitantly large, they render themselves obsolete. This happens to battleships during World War II. And then during the Cold War, it happens to the cruisers as well. And uh, the cruiser lineage dies off just about entirely with cruiser-hauled ships. It's resurrected briefly with destroyer hauls. And this is where we're going to get into how do you tell the difference between a, a modern destroyer and cruiser. And then uh, it's more or less gone away entirely today. So nowadays, the U.S. Navy is decommissioning the Ticonderoga-class cruisers. There is no replacement in designer construction. Russia is the only other country that operates cruisers. They will not for much longer. They just lost Moscow to a uh, Ukrainian missile attack. Most likely, they say it was an internal fire. Either way, it shows the age and obsolescence of those vessels. Their sister ships will soon be decommissioned, and then there will be no more cruisers in the world. When cruisers became too large, ships like Salem that are displacing 20,000 tons, that design lineage goes away entirely. However, with the Spruance-class destroyers, the Navy was not happy with the weapons load out of those ships, and they repurposed the Spruance-class hull to carry more weapons. So it is a destroyer hull. It is not from the cruiser lineage. However, since it carries more weapons than a destroyer, they called it the Ticonderoga-class cruiser. And that really is the only distinction in the modern day. Cruisers, destroyers, and even frigates uh, all tend to be in the same size, the same hull form. It's just a matter of how many weapons they have. With cruisers tending to be able to do a variety of missile missions, destroyers tending to be a little bit smaller or carry a few less missiles, and be able to do a few less missions. And then frigates tend to be one or two missions uh, and, and significantly less weapons. Otherwise, they're all, again, within the same ballpark, within the similar design families. They all tend to carry sonar. They all tend to carry any submarine stuff. Uh, they'll often carry some sort of missile for anti-ship, anti-surface, or anti-air, or some combination thereof. 
uh, as you go into destroyer and then cruiser range. They'll often carry the same sensors, for example, Spanish and Australian frigates, American destroyers and cruisers and Japanese destroyers all use the Aegis missile system um, and, and radar system. So it's not necessarily a sensor thing. It, it really is, as best as I can tell, just a uh, weapons outfit thing in modern ships. But realistically, there's an argument to be made that if it didn't come from the cruiser lineage, like modern cruisers, which come from a destroyer lineage, they're actually just overgrown destroyers. And like I said, the cruisers are almost all extinct now. They'll all be decommissioned within five years, I bet. So what's replaced them? The destroyers have all grown to 10,000 tons. Remember the weight of heavy cruisers in World War II? 10,000 tons. The destroyers are taking over that job. And uh, what's replacing the destroyers as an expendable ship? Well, the frigates have moved up to that. Uh, and that is essentially doing the same job as destroyers did during World War II. And uh, what's moving up into the, the smaller slot than that? The corvettes. So we're seeing something interesting with modern ships that you don't see, say, during the Age of Sail, where as ships grow to the point that they become obsolete and disappear, they're being replaced by the next size down, which has grown into their old size uh, limit. And then you just keep adding a newer small size, like the U.S. Navy adds the littoral combat ships to be smaller than frigates and corvettes. Well, that hasn't caught on, but probably in the next couple of years, as destroyers take over from cruisers and frigates take over from destroyers, we'll see some new type of ship take in that lower tier uh, name. You'll have to keep watching the channel for the next decade and see what that'll be. So, uh, you can see why people have issues with this. During World War II, they're fairly well defined, and that's because an international treaty system limits the size of guns and weight of these ships so that they do fit within very spe special, uh, specific guidelines. With that removed, it's much harder to define and you get this rampant growth, uh, which is why many people with the general public have questions about this today. What's your favorite type of ship? What, what do you think is the coolest name for an entire type of ship? Let us know in the comment section down below. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State, also from a number of other businesses and private individuals like yourselves. We really appreciate your support. There's a link in the description below if you'd like to support the Buffalo Naval Park which allowed us to film on board today. Supporting them supports the ongoing restoration of their ships, and there's a link in the description for that. There's also a link for their social media so that you can learn more about the ships from them. You can support Battleship New Jersey by liking, sharing, and subscribing so more people find about us and our channel. Thanks for watching.